I'm Gilbert Cruz with Time.com, and I'm here today with Larry King, host of CNN's long-running Larry King Live and author of the new memoir, My Remarkable Journey. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, Gilbert. What has allowed you to last this long in the job, and do you still enjoy doing it? I still very much enjoy it, and longevity is impossible to explain. I'm doing what I always wanted to do. I never wanted to do anything else but be a broadcaster. I'm talking about age five. I would listen to the radio and imitate the radio announcers, but I never thought I never thought I'd be seen worldwide. So all of this is a dream come true. We almost call the book "What Am I Doing Here?" I still <laughs> I still pinch myself. Do you agree with the perception that sometimes you avoid asking difficult questions? Don't agree with it. What I I I'm not there to pin someone to the wall. I try to ask perceptive questions, thoughtful questions that get at an arrival of what that person is, how they are, and what they bring forth. If I were to begin an interview with uh, Nancy Pelosi and say, why did you lie about the torture things you learned? The last thing I will learn is the truth. Of course, what am I doing? I'm putting them on defensive purposely to make me look good. Nothing to do with them. They're a prop. At that point, they're a prop. Well, to me, the, the guess is not a prop. Are you still learning uh, how to interview people, or have you got that down, sort of the technique? That I think I have down. I think I know <laughs> how to interview people. I've done it for so long. It's who, what, where, when, why. Mm -hmm. It's in what order you put them. What you want is a good interview subject. If you've got a subject who is um, passionate, who has the ability to explain what they do very well, who has a sense of humor, hopefully self-deprecating, and a little bit of a chip on the shoulder. You got those four things? Don't matter. President, plumber, architect, singer. You got those four things? No one will click off. Are you at all concerned at the popularity of ideologically charged news programs, programs where the uh, host is someone who injects a lot of themselves yeah. into I'm it. not personally concerned because I know that all things are cyclical. There's a wave that comes in, then it goes out. Hopefully, the good, straight interview, in-depth, thoughtful, listening to the answer, the guest counts, will always be around. So I'm not a fan of the ideological-based show, right or left, because I don't learn anything. There's something I learned a long time ago. I never learned a thing when I was talking. I never learned a thing when I was talking. So these shows in which the host is on 90% of the time, the guest 10%. I don't get it. But I understand people like it. I wouldn't do it. How many pair of suspenders do you actually have? Never counted them. But my guess would be based on their suspenders in New York and in Washington and, of course, in my home, 150. Much more ties. The one thing they have to have, they can't be clip-ons. They have to be buttons, over the buttons. So every pair of pants I buy, jeans, anything I buy, we sew in the suspender buttons. I've gotten very used to them. I like the feel. I like the way they wear. I like, I like the look. What do you think is the greatest challenge that media faces today? The greatest challenge media faces today is new media. No one can predict tomorrow. The technology is ahead of the intellect. By that I mean, what I thought was fantastic was television. Think of it. You and I can be seen around the world in a, in a minute. Then the satellites, sat, what about satellites? Look, how would you top satellites? And then guys walk around with little machines and they punch them and, and words appear. And think, so the new media is Everybody's a journalist, everybody Twitters, and they have websites, and they send out, and, and the danger in it, the danger in it is real, that any, when anyone's a newsman, you get a lot of false news, overreaction to stories, jumping on stories too quickly, no measuring, and the saddest part of it is the decline of the newspaper. I love newspapers. In fact, as an aside, I was, uh, uh, had my head done today, with, and Rupert Murdoch was in the next, all and we were talking, and uh, of course he loves newspapers, and I love newspapers, and he said that was, that's another generation. That's sad. Larry, our last question. 
is from Felicity Osborne from New Rochelle, New York. She asks, what does life after Larry King Live look like to you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. First, as Milton Berle said, retire to what? What would I do? I have no idea. I would do something. In other words, if I, if I wasn't at CNN, I'd do something in media. I'd volunteer to work for Major League Baseball. That's nice. Because baseball is my favorite avocation. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd, I would volunteer to do something. You work so much, you don't relish uh, sort of just relaxing. Uh, I'm not a relaxer. <laughs> I, I'm not. No, no, no. no. Relax is not in my, uh, my nomenclature. I, uh, I'm not a good sitter-arounder, if that's a term. It doesn't, it doesn't suit me.